another weekend, another day working on the Skyline. Alright, so I'm back working on the Skyline today. I'm going to have a crack at doing the fuel system. So I've got a couple of goodies here. So that's the rail, got just some fuel hose, uh, fuel pressure regulator, a bunch of AN fittings, filters, race work stuff. Uh, also need to drain the tank, so I'm going to have a go at siphoning it out, so I reckon that should be pretty fun. Uh, hopefully I don't get a mouth full, full of fuel. <laughs> um, and then after that, uh, yeah, i got to go fit up the rail. Um, I'm not going to replace the fuel lines all the way down the car. I'm basically just going to go from, uh, leave the metal lines in there and then just do rubber lines from where they stop in the engine bay, obviously to the fuel rail, the return, come back and then goes into the tank. Mice might also have a go at doing the lines at the tank, but I don't really want to remove the tank. So we'll see if that's possible with it in there and we'll go from there. So obviously I got to remove the old fuel pump and stuff. Um, I did take off the return and the feed line. And yes, I do regret not labeling it because I don't know which one's which. So if you look inside, surprisingly, it's actually pretty, pretty clean in there. There's actually no chunky bits, which is nice. So still got to drain it because that's 98, and obviously I'm going to be running on 85. Uh, so got to get rid of that, and I'll probably just put it in the lawnmower or something. Here's my very professional siphoning setup. We got the Bunnings hose going into the tank, and then I've done the loop down here. Uh, so it'll go below the tank and then it'll come back up and I'll use this end to suck it through and got my canister and my bucket just in case so really don't have high hopes for this but um, I'm sure there's a better way of doing it but we're all about getting it done around here uh, so I'm going to give it a go and hey it might work you don't know hose is all the way in the tank got my my loop here we should be <laughs> We should be good to go. So, not if you guys can see this, but oh, it's actually working. <laughs> That's fucking cool. So, she's going, she's blowing up. Mmm, stale petrol. Bloody good. Apart from a little bit of a spillage, what about a full jerry, um, which is all stale fuel, so no good. But there only is like the tiniest bit in that tank, like it's maybe like fingernails deep. I just leave that in there, should be fine. Once I uh, put the, the jerry for a couple jerrys, the 85 in, when I start the car, just run it for a bit. That'll drain out and just put some more A85 in and it should get rid of it, so it should be fine. But uh, pretty happy with that. Didn't get a mouthful of fuel, which is nice, and free petrol. So there's quite a bit going on here, as you can see, but I've drawn up this diagram, so hopefully it'll make sense. Um, so essentially what I'm doing is there's a really good write-up actually uh, online. If you just type in like R31 fuel pump wiring mod or something like that, it'll come up. And all it does is that I'm basically running the fuel pump straight from the battery. Um, so all I've done is got batteries here. So keeping out the front of the car, I've got my 30 amp fuse here. It's going to go to a relay. And then the different points are going on the relay are going to go to the pump. So I've got, here's my relay. I've got the uh, white with purple stripe. That's the power for the coil. Then I've got the thick black wire, that's the ground for the coil. Uh, I've got the wire that I'm going to run from the battery to the uh, straight to the fuel pump, which is this one here. This is overkill, but this is just what I had. Um, you can use way smaller wire than that. And then you've got your wire, which will be this one, which is from your fuse, your, basically from your relay to your pump. So that's where I've got it there, and I've just crimped on the ends. So that's the purple and white one I was talking about. And then um, you've got that black one there that's got the uh, two layers of insulation. Uh, and then I've got to find a ground that I can make my own with. And obviously that's the one coming from the battery. Um, and yeah, this one's the one going to the pump. What I've had to do is drill out these two hats. 
So these holes were originally like these white caps. So I just drilled them out and got rid of them. Um, and instead, I'm gonna use these like IP68 or whatever you call them, grommets. Uh, they're really good. I think they'll keep out the water because we use them on switchboards and stuff as well, as well at work. So that'll keep the fuel from coming through the hats. So this will go here. Obviously your, your thick red wire will come through. And the thing is with the pump, so with the pump, that's the Wilbro 460 TI Automotive, same thing. They give you all these different like kits of the ways you can do it. Uh, all these like jumper leads and stuff like that. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because I actually previously cut these off and these are really short, so I'm gonna have to make a join in the tank, which is really annoying. But what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna double heat shrink it. So I'm gonna put two layers of that on and then I'll also go ahead, I might put some fuel hose on top of that and then use some stainless zip ties to hold it together. Cause yeah, I don't really want anything exploding in the tank. I know it's not ideal to have the, um, like a join in the tank kind of thing. It's not gonna be submerged, but still, uh, but that's just how it's gonna have to be. So hopefully this diagram cleared it up a bit. So it's not so confusing. Doesn't sound like I'm talking out of my ass. Um, but there is a really good write-up as well, so you can go look that up online. Right, so secured my fuel pump in. Got the filter on it as well, just put a zip tie here. And done this up. I just have to split the boot, obviously, to fit the pump because it's tapered at this end it's bigger at this end and then i just zip tied the ends in here this is what i was talking about and making a join so what i'm going to attempt to do is use these little glands here so they just opened up and then they have this rubber bit in there so put this on this end put this through then I get my little rubber bit and put that in. And hopefully that should be fuel tight. So nothing is going to leak through either end of that. And obviously I just do the same thing with the ground as well. Right, so everything's back together. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out, to be honest with you. The uh, soldering turned out all right and it cleaned up nice with the heat shrink and stuff like that. Off camera, I was mucking around with this bloody float and it's broken, all the wires broken. It was a nightmare, but it's back on now and it seems to be all right. So we should be good to go there. But yeah, overall, pretty happy with it turned out. All that's left to do now is just put the pump in and we should be good to go. So fuel pumps in, haven't connected the feed or the return yet, because one, I don't know which one's which, and two, I want to try and place these hoses. Um, but you see, we've got the relay all done up now. That's all good. Got the factory connector back in, the wire that's running to the front of the car, to the battery. And then I've gone ahead and tried to ground it here. Um, I just tried to get off some paint with a wire wheel. This was already grounded. I'm pretty sure that's for the rear tail lights. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. If not, I'll just have to find another place to ground it. And we'll move on to trying to replace these tank lines first. And if I can't do that, we'll move up the front and start on the lines for the fuel rail. So after a bit of a muck around, got my lines on now and underneath the car, same thing as well. Got those lines on. So all new 85 safe hose. And then we'll run up to the front and start running the feed and return at the front with the filter. All right, so now we're at the front. I'm gonna tackle this bit of a jungle here. So it kind of looks like shit, but I know what's going on. It's just the wiring that makes it look confusing. So I've got our feed here with the filter and the return. I'm just gonna replace these lines. I've got a new fuel, uh, fuel filter as well. And then I have to put the fuel pressure regulator on. I'm thinking mounting it like somewhere around here, just using like one of these pre-existing uh, threaded holes already. Um, and then after that, we gotta obviously run it. I gotta put the planter on and then we're gonna run the rail. Um, so there's a couple different ways it seems like you can run it. So this is the one that I've chosen. So. Better than me explaining, you can just see what's going on. Hopefully you can see that. But um, we're gonna start with, obviously the feed going into your filter, then going into the rail, coming out of the rail, going into the fuel pressure reg, and then from the fuel pressure reg, obviously I'm not gonna have this running straight ADD5, go straight back to the tank. So in theory, it should work out. 
Uh, hopefully I have all the right fittings and stuff because I've got heaps of shit down here. Boxes of stuff and whatnot. But um, injectors, fuel rail and all that, so we should be good to go. I think I messed it up for the third time, but pretty sure you have to put this adapter first onto here, which goes onto the rail, and then that's the adapter that's going to go into the manifold with the manifold adapter. So, third time is a charm, hopefully, it's right. sprayed a little bit of pile of mire on this so that should seal properly hopefully Alright, so that was a bit of a workout, but <laughs> manifold's finally on, pretty happy. Um, so I'm going to start running the rail through now. So I'll start from up here, I'm just going to run a piece uh, all the way to the back of the rail on a barb and then go through the rail and then it will come back, loop into here, the fuel pressure reg, and then come out of the fuel pressure reg and go back into the return. Heaps of trouble putting in these last two injectors here. I don't know why, just it just won't go in. So I've actually put the others in without the fuel rail, and I think you might put the fuel rail on top. Um, but I might have done a bit of a stupid thing, and I think they're not fitting because I left the injectors out in the sun, and then the O rings got hot and they expanded. So what I've done, this is either the smartest thing in the world, or I'm gonna look like an absolute dickhead, but I've put the adapters in the freezer so hopefully they'll cool down I'll be able to put them in and we will be good to go so yeah didn't end up working but I think I may have found a solution so this is the normal o-ring and that'll go into the manifold adapter so it's nice and circle and then I don't know if I've got the wrong ones or I've squashed it or what's going on I've pinched it but hopefully you can see that that's like squarish um, the sides compared to the, these rounded edges so if I hold them up next to each other might be able to see the difference um, so these are just too big they're not fitting in the manifold so with these adapters here um, that go on one side of the injector uh, to go into the rail 
they actually accept these bigger o-rings there's slightly more room than the manifold adapters so i'm going to try and put this onto the side uh, the top of the injector here and then put the adapter on and then put the good o-ring on top of that that'll go into the rail and then put the other good o-ring on the bottom of the injector and then that that'll go into the manifold adapter so hopefully that will work i did go and buy a set of um o-rings from super cheap but of course the one size i need they don't have which is ironic um, <laughs> so i just want to get this done so i'm just going to try it see what happens if it does leak i'll just have to order um a new set of uh or two o-rings because it's only for two injectors it's really weird like all the other ones they're all good and then yeah just two of them they're just shit like that so there's the other one there so yeah so i've finally got the rail on and it's looking pretty good i reckon so injectors went on eventually um seems to be not much play in them which is good so hopefully that sealed up all right for the two i had trouble with um that's what it looks like i've chucked on uh two 90s one here and one here so i'm going to start by making out of the filter around the back to that 90 and obviously it'll go through out of this 90 into the reg and then out of the reg back into the um return to the tank so i'm not sure about this routing here just because i don't really know what's going to be in the way i'm obviously going to have the intercooler piping here i don't know if anything else is going to be here alternator i think will be down here somewhere so i'm probably going to keep this a bit long for now and we'll go from there right so i've ran the lines so we've got going from the filter ended up running it through the back to that 90 and then from here a bit of change of plans i didn't really like it coming out the front because i didn't really know what was going to go here so i thought i'd run it back through the plenum and then around into the reg and then the easiest bit was just from the reg down into the return so overall pretty happy with how it turned out um as per usual though if i've done something wrong or you know a better way of doing it let me know because that's what this whole thing's about um but pretty happy with how it turned out to be honest now i'm just going to do some boring stuff um i need to put the alternator and power steering on I'm not going to film it because nobody wants to see that um because it's boring <laughs> But the other thing I also have to do is a lot of the wiring. So obviously I haven't wired the injectors, but there's going to be a whole video on that. I'm going to get rid of this bird's nest of wiring, which is going to be fun. Uh, I've got a whole new loom for it. So pretty keen to get started on that because that's going to take a while. I've also got to set the base pressure on the reg, which I'm not going to do now, but I do need to do that. Um, and I know I need the vacuum reference from here, but when I do the wastegate, I'll work out where all I'm going to get all my vacuum references from. But it's hard to see there is actually three ports underneath the manifold here so i might be able to go with that 